Hey, what's cracking everybody? On today's video, we're gonna take a look at Linux Mint 22.2. This is the latest version that was released by Linux Mint, and I think it's been released for a couple weeks now already, I'm not sure. But uh, the version that I'm gonna take a look at is gonna be the uh, XFCE version. I know everybody always uh, downloads the Cinnamon version, but I'm gonna do the, uh, I'm gonna do the uh, XFCE edition so it's this one right here light simple efficient xfce edition xfce is a lightweight desktop environment it doesn't support as many features as cinnamon but it's lighter on resources and usage all right so i already downloaded this iso and i have it up in a virtual machine right now all right so uh let's head on over to the virtual machine and take a look at linux mint 22.2 Okay, we are here on the virtual machine now and I got the ISO booted up and you can see we have an icon on the desktop that says install Linux Mint. So I'm going to go ahead and click on it and this should open up the uh, Ubiquity installer. Okay, and our first option is to select our language, which is English. Click on continue. All right, now we have a keyboard layout and that's also going to be English, US. Of course, if you are somewhere else, you just choose your selection correctly. Okay, and then we're going to install the multimedia codecs. On, on some installers, it will say third party, but right here it just says multimedia codecs. And then right here, we're going to choose erase disk and install Linux Mint. You can also select something else and manually uh, partition your drive, but uh, the easy way is just erase disk and install Linux Mint. All right, next we'll enter our location and then user info. All right, Los Angeles is already selected. So I'll click on continue. And now I enter the user info. All right. And for the sake of this video, I will be logging in automatically. Not, uh, not suggested for new users. Click on continue and it should start the installation. All right, and it's off to the install. So I'll let this go ahead and install. And when we come back, we'll take a look at uh, Linux Mint 22.2. I didn't even see what the code name for this one was, but uh, you know, we'll do that once we uh, get it back on. We are now here at the virtual machine and you can see we are welcomed by the welcome screen from Linux Mint. So let me just make this, I'll leave it at the regular size. And we got welcome to Linux Mint. Welcome to your new operating system. This welcome screen will guide you through your first steps. Show you how to find the help and where to get more information about Linux Mint. On behalf of the development team and everyone involved in the project, we'd like to thank you for choosing Linux Mint. We hope you'll enjoy using it as much as we enjoy working on it. Have a great time and don't hesitate to send us your feedback. Let's go. So Linux Mint 22.2 XFCE. So let me see, let me open up a uh, website real quick. Uh, well, let me open up the, uh, I was hoping there'll be a thing for Linux Mint, but I could just type Linux Mint. So we'll go to Linux Mint, Linux Mint at home. All right, Linux Mint 22.2 and the code name is Zara, Z-A-R-A. All right, that's all I wanted to check real quick. Let me go ahead and close that. All right, so right here on the welcome screen, you also have some uh, first steps. So from right here, you can check your desktop colors. If you want to switch things up, you can do a system uh, snapshot. That way you can back up your system. You can check for drivers for your, uh, you know, your graphics card and things like that, CPU. There's even an update manager and system settings. All right, then you have all your documentation, your help. And for those of you that want to contribute, there it is right there. You can contribute to Linux Mint. And if you don't want this to show up the next time you uh, reboot the system, uncheck this right here. All righty. 
So on this version of Linux Mint, we are using the uh, XFCE desktop environment. So it's fairly similar to the uh, Cinnamon, but it's, you know, it has its own differences. XFCE is highly uh, themable, so you can make it look like whatever you want. And you can see right here, basically we have our panel on the bottom. This panel has a system tray like most do on the right. This is where you have all your volume controls, your date and time, calendars, your uh, internet connections, your updates, they all show up here, your notifications. And then on the left, you have your pinned applications. So in this case, we have Thunar, XFCE Terminal, and Firefox Web Browser. And then this is to minimize all open windows. So let's say you have five, you have a, a folder open, a web browser and GIMP and a video player. If you wanted to just hide them all with one click, you would click on this. I'll give you an example. Let's open up that. Let's open up the terminal. And let's open up Thunar. So I have all these opened up right now. So you got the web browser. You got a terminal. And you got a file manager. And if you want to make them all disappear real quick, just click on that button. And you can see they're still down here. And if you want to mag, uh, not maximize them, but show them again, just click the same button. All right, that's just a quick example. And of course you have your uh, application launcher. So right here, basically you got your favorites, your recently used, all applications, accessories, graphics, internet, Multimedia, Office, Settings, System. Then you have your session buttons up here along with your uh, system settings. And then you have your search down here. But on this menu, this uh, menu itself, you can actually switch everything around and put it in different places. All right. And then on the desktop, you do have a right click. And on the right click, you can uh, set up your wallpapers and things like that. So, you know, if you wanted to change a wallpaper, you could do that. If you wanted to add some uh, menus or if you want some desktop items to show up out here, let's say, for example, this home file system trash, you can make them all up here. All right. And also with the right click, you can uh, open up a terminal or you can uh, arrange desktop items, desktop icons. And you know, you could create a folder, create URL link. There's a lot of different things you could do right here. XFCE is lightweight and it's very flexible. And right here in the system tray, you see we have one icon that has a little alert on it. And that's basically your, up, your updater. So welcome to the update manager. And from right here, you know, you would click on okay. And then from right here, you can apply an update. So all your updates will come through here. Or you can open up a terminal and do a pseudo app update. But what Linux meant, basically, they got it set up to where you don't have to open up a terminal. But we're not going to update right now since we're doing a first look at 22.2. All right. And also, I noticed while going through this, pretty much you got everything you need right here. You got your, uh, you know, you got your graphics. Uh, apps you got your internet apps you got your multimedia apps you got office i didn't see gimp so yeah you might want to install gimp but you do have a you know image viewer and things like that but yeah it's linux mint it comes with pretty much everything that you need and then this right here is going to be your system settings so you know all systems have a some form or another of system settings and you know you want to change the about me appearance desktop, desktop settings, notifications, panel, window manager, window manager tweaks, workspaces. Then you got your color profiles, display, keyboard, mouse and touchpad, power manager, pulse audio, volume control, removal drives and media. Then next you have access accessibility, default applications, driver manager, firewall configuration, input method, languages, Login window, session and startup, software manager, software sources, and update manager. And then if your system has Bluetooth, you have your Bluetooth adapter, adapter, and then you also have your settings editor. And these are your settings for your system. As you can see right here on XFCE, it's not as many as you would see, let's say like on GNOME or uh, Plasma. But believe me, you can you can you can change a lot with XFCE, and you can make it look however you want to make it look. All right, so uh, 
Let's open up their uh, file manager, which in this case is going to be Thunar. Usually on Cinnamon, you'll find uh, Nemo, but this one is uh, Thunar, and you can see you have your basic uh, layout right here. You got your desktop, documents, downloads, music, pictures, public, templates, and videos. Of course, all of these are empty until you populate them yourself. And to do a uh, to look for the hidden files, the right click will not give you an option. So you would have to use Control H on your keyboard, and that will show you all of your hidden files. And to hide them again, Control H. And we could take a look at the about, and it is Thunar 4.18.8. All right, next to that, we have our terminal. This should be the uh, XFCE terminal. So let's look at the about. And it is the XFCE4 terminal. All right, and let's see if we have HTOP. Uh, we don't, but we can install it. So we can do a sudo app install HTOP. And I'm also going to do fast fetch. Do a two in one. Okay, it doesn't find fast fetch. Did I spell it correctly? I did. So we're only going to do H top. I wonder if they still have a Neo fetch. Just out of curiosity, let me check that out. All right, NeoFetch is already installed. <laughs> like I said, if it ain't broke, why fix it, right? All right, let's go ahead and uh, clear the screen. And first we'll do HTOP. And you can see right here, let me make this a little bit bigger. We're only using uh, 850 megabytes out of four gigabytes. And of course the load averages are very low. XFCE is a, is a low memory hog, low CPU usage. And uh, yeah, you can see the proof is in the pudding. All right, let me make it just a little bit smaller so we can uh, check out uh, NeoFetch. All right, and there we have NeoFetch Linux Mint 22.2. And the kernel, it is using 6.14.0. And you can see all the packages you got installed using the bash shell. It gives you a screen resolution, your desktop environment, your window manager, and your window manager theme. Of course, all your themes are right here, all your theme info. Then you got your terminal. And then these, these last three items right here, these are gonna be specific to whatever system it's installed on. In this case, you know, for you, it would be different because you might be on a Intel AMD or whatever. So your information would be different. Your, your memory will be different, your GPU, your CPU, or maybe not. Maybe you have the same thing I have. Anyways, that's a uh, NeoFetch. All right, and then the last item we have right here is gonna be, of course, Firefox. We all know Firefox is basically on every, uh, not every Linux system, but I would say like 95% of the systems itself. And Mozilla Firefox for Linux Mint. So this is a special dedicated version for Linux Mint itself. And it is Mint-001-1.0. I think they started doing this because of the issues with uh with uh Ubuntu and the snap drama, all the drama with all the snap packages and things like that. But I you know, I don't pay attention to none of that. You know, Linux should be a, you should be able to do whatever you want with your system. And Ubuntu is one of the few that are trying to make that harder for everyone. And you know, it has its own politics issue, so you know, I'm not gonna get into it. Anyways, this is uh, Linux Mint. Linux Mint 22.2, codename Zara, with the XFCE desktop environment. Looks beautiful. This is the this is the system they got me off of uh, Windows way back in 2008. 
Linux Mint looked a whole lot different back then. Was it Linux Mint or was it Ubuntu they got? No, it was Linux Mint. I remember I installed Ubuntu back then and I was like, what the hell am I looking at? So I scrapped that real quick and I put Linux Mint on and I said, okay, now I feel a little bit better. Nowadays, everyone tries to uh, introduce all these uh, systems for new users. And my point of view is just put them on Linux Mint. And then from there, the whole Linux world is at their fingertips. Once they learn this system, get on it, play with it, and get used to it. Then from here, they can just move on to whatever else they want. Because, you know, you know they, let's say, for example, they want to move to Fedora. There's going to be a learning curve because commands are different. You know, every a lot of aspects in the backbones are going to be different. How to install software, how to change things. And, you know, or if they go to Arch, it's going to be different. You know, you got Pac-Man over there and, you know, things work different and constant updates, you know, rolling release. So always, if you're going to um, suggest a system to somebody, just suggest Linux Mint. Keep it simple. Suggest Linux Mint. Let them get started with that. And then from there, they can just take flight and go to wherever they want to. But anyways, that's just my point of view. You know, you can do whatever you want. I don't care. It's just that uh, it's, a, it's an easy suggestion to just do it with Linux Mint because it got me off. Like I said, I tried Ubuntu before I tried Linux Mint and I didn't even last an hour on Ubuntu. I got that shit off my system quick. I was like, what the hell am I looking at? And yeah, Ubuntu wouldn't cut. Nah, now nah, I don't feel bad about Ubuntu, you know. I mean, now they're, they're doing things that are questionable, but, you know, back then, I, I wasn't tuned to none of these politics or nothing. Just taking a look at it after installing something, after being on Windows my whole life and then saying, okay, I'm going to make to move the Linux. And then I installed Ubuntu. And just that the way that the whole layout, I was like, what the hell is this? And just uh, and then back then, you know, it was different. And when I installed Linux Mint, I was at home. I was at home with Linux Mint. I, I basically I could see everything the way it was set up and how to get to everything. It was just 20 times easier. And that's what, you know, since 08, I've been here. All right, you guys, that's going to do it for this video. Uh, if you're new to the channel, please go ahead and uh, subscribe. Uh, if you like the video you just saw, please hit that thumbs up button. If you didn't like the video you saw, by all means, hit the thumbs down button. All right, you guys, that's going to do it for this video. And I'm out.